That's it, we're live. Right, welcome back to All Stars MMA podcast. We are still missing uh, Danny Mitchell. He's rest in peace. Rest in peace. Apparently, I, I did speak to him yesterday. He sent me a happy birthday message. And happy birthday yesterday. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. Oh, cheers, man. How old are you? 27. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Right, yeah, just, just cut it. Uh, yeah, Danny's, uh, he's, he dropped me a message and, and I said, how oh, are you getting on your honeymoon? Sounds like he's having a good, a good time, but he has uh, still got man flu, by the sounds of things, which isn't good for him. I absolutely drove himself into the ground when he were already ill. I know. Guy can't take a break. I mean, he has now, but a little bit too late. But he still won't be having a break when he's out there, will he? He'll still be matching fights and sending messages. and. Uh, of course he will. Tossing off elephants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, like, play with elephants, but whatever. Yeah, so it looks like he's having fun. Hopefully we're back. Uh, we're not going to be podcasting next week, are we? Not a chance. So... We say play it by ear. No. <laughs> but they, I mean, what, that's like Christmas. Isn't it Christmas Eve this time next week? It's Christmas this time next week. All oh, right. It's okay. good Christmas day. Yes. Yes, we're definitely not forecasting next week. Um, but quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, Ali from Muscle Medicine. Still t- is, have you anyone been seeing him recently? Have you been seeing him recently, Danny? Uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm just before ADCC. Yeah, and he's got, ready he's got himself a, a prime spot on uh, Rico's little documentary series that I'm trying to piece together and edit whilst working for a living. Um, but yeah, check out uh, Ali at Mus- Muscle Medicine. Uh, he did put a post out yesterday. He's going to do a 20% off sale in January. And he put out some sort of statistics and information on sciatica, um, which is something I massively suffer with. That's why I see him quite often. Um, I'm sure most do. Uh, and uh, Amazing Green CBD. Have you, you'll, have, you'll have spoke to Tony, won't you, recently? Uh, he's currently in Sri Lanka. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's uh, over on holiday. They've just dropped all the prices, so if you go online um, and that, there's some big savings on there, so go have a little look around. There you go. Um, am I right in thinking that you might be doing a giveaway at some point? Well, there the, the may, the may be a giveaway coming back. Seems as we failed with the Sri Lanka giveaway last time. Yeah. A bit of bad timing. See, at least you did the right thing there. Who was on? It were Cam Atakuru, wasn't it? I'm sure Cam was on that, that podcast after, and he laughed. Oh, yeah. like, you fucking brutal, you. <laughs> <laughs> Savage, guys. I know, yeah. What do we expect? Anyway, welcome our guest, Jay Furness. How's it going, man? Yeah, the worst guest ever. Just somebody who, like, a bad smell. Why are you Keeps the worst? lingering around. You, you're actually a co-host today. You're yeah. not a guest. Yeah. People, my story's been told, I guess, which this is just a, not really a guest here. Yeah, you're a co-host. You're going to help us get through this because, yeah. uh, unfortunately, Danny Jessup, who sits at corner and... This kind of sort of helps plan. It just sort of drops as a message. Yeah, I, I plan the show. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? I won't, go, <laughs> I won't call it planning. I mean, if we plan, if we all plan like that, we'd never get I, anywhere. I've got a plan. I um, just don't let you. Yes, yeah, so we've got a bit of a show piece together. From it, it was UFC, UFC two forty five this weekend. We're going to go over that, uh, I believe, initially, and then we're going to talk about fame, which you were part of this weekend, weren't you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was. What's Some. It? Yeah, somewhat begrudgingly, but yeah, we'll get to it. Sure. All right, okay, cool. Well, uh, let's let's dive straight into UFC 244. What uh, what we got on the cards there, Danny? Uh, so, would you, do you just want to go straight into the main card? Yeah, yeah I think I didn't watch prelims. I watched them. Um, uh, when did I pick it up? I didn't watch Amanda Nunes. Yeah, I only saw the last two fights myself. So, which ones have you watched? So, I've watched the uh, alt main card. So, Peter Yan uh, versus Uriah Faber. Ooh, that were a yeah, I saw the finish. So I saw, I've just seen. I'm watching the whole fight. By all accounts, uh, I think Faber did well in the early running, from what I read. But I haven't watched the whole fight. But Pete Ian, he's a brutal guy. I think he's an awesome fighter to watch. I heard some stuff about him, um, like when he's out in Thailand and stuff. Like, I mean, he's a pretty small guy. They're fighting at a low weight class, but he was like the the gym enforcer. You know, if people tried to come in and like, you always have need that guy around. People used to come in and try and like take liberties with people. Yeah. Just like give him the nod and he'd go, you know, enforce the rules, let's say, on him. But uh, yeah, he's just, I love his style. Good guy. Class. And it was a horrible finish for him. I mean, yeah. were it a good stoppage that? Like, or could it have been stopped earlier? Like, from what I saw, I mean, he looked like he was still sort of in the game, but it looked they he, he were getting beat up pretty I, bad. I'd say that were a fairer stoppage than uh, Colvey uh, stoppage. Whoa, 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 we'll get whoa, there. whoa, 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 come on. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah, you're the <laughs> fucking planner of this. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, um, I don't know. I I thought it was good. It, the thing is, because of Faber's age, he's come back. I don't like to see guys necessarily coming back. Faber's not a young guy; he's late thirties now. Is he? He's forty. 40. He's, he's forty. Yeah. 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 I mean, it looks good for his age. He's obviously kept himself well, but 
coming back at that age, you know, I, he did well in his comeback fight and whatever, but I think then once you're going up a level to these guys who are like so young and hungry and virile and powerful and can go forever, you know, sound like I was selling some sort of sex pill, <laughs> didn't it then? But like, you know what I mean? Someone like Peter Yan, that's just like next level, you know what I mean? And um, taking a knockout at, at Faber's age and stuff like that is... Uh, but you don't need it. No. You know what I mean, he's a legend of the sport. I, I doubt he needs the money. He's got a successful gym. He's obviously got the competitive fire. But yeah. you know, I don't. I don't like to see it necessarily. Do you think that's? Do you think that's it? Has he, has he sort of said anything about possibly going back into retirement on the back of it? Not, no, he not speculating or all that. He hasn't mentioned all about retirement. I think he wants um, another was, fight. Yeah, yeah. No one, yeah. I think you know, early on, he w- he showed that he can still like uh, hold his own to a certain degree with these guys, but. He's never like he's not going to get back to the top now. Do you know what I mean? He's not going to fight again for the title, most likely. Um, I know there were some sort of calls for it before, or whatever. But it's not like it's not going to happen, especially now he's been stopped by by Jan. Yeah. You know. So what else is there to do? Especially, you know, the toll of getting knocked out takes on you. You know, long term. It's um, it's well documented I, now. Yeah. Isn't it? If it, if I was him, you know, that that'd be me done. And if I ever got the chance to tell him, I'd say him the tell him the same thing. But I guess this just can't extinguish some people's fire. No, which I suppose it's admirable as well, isn't it? You know what I mean? That's that's the reason why I guess there's many people that still do fight on after, I guess, the rest would say the careers have, have been and gone. But fair play to him, you know, had a good inning. Yeah, if it had, if it had gone all the way, you know, gone the distance and lost, I, I guess you might be saying something different. Yeah. And it, well, it got to the third round, but it's still, you know, taking a knockout at any point is not good, but, you know, you're... You're getting into a, a point in your life where you don't recover as fast, and you know it's kind of a downhill slide from there. So any extra damage you're taking at that point is he's done pretty well during his career to get to this point. And I don't recall him ever having prolonged periods off with bad injuries and stuff like that. Like it'd be a shame to see him, you know, on that downward slide now. Yeah, definitely. Um, what were the next fight then, Danny? So next one we had Marlon Moraes versus Jose Aldo. Big cut that one it now down to one thirty five on it, one thirty five yeah 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 yeah. So he made one thirty six didn't he, which is the the pound limit. Yeah, it it looked good. He didn't look. I heard Joe Rogan talking about it, and obviously he he didn't do like the full TJ Dillashaw. He actually took a long time to get down to that weight, so he, he acclimatized to it. I guess the best way to describe it. Um, I think he's eating a lot of plant based. So I've heard as well. Really? Yep. There was there was something about that. Yeah, I think. There was some sort of stat saying he's eating some like two pounds of greens a day or some salad a day or something crazy like that. Yeah, but yeah, look, I thought it was going to be um, harder for him. He, he struggled with um, with featherweight in the past, but if he's done it the right way, you could tell he's lost some muscle mass. He's not yeah. just tried to um, cut the water weight, which is you know the better way to do it. But yeah, he he was like noticeably thinner, lost the muscle mass to get down, um, and he kind of looked a bit better on the scales than I expected him to. I think they floated some images out there of him. Looking like a bit of a crackhead, you know, the, like the week out or whatever. But he, um, yeah, he, like he didn't look too bad. And when it when it came to um, when it came to the fight, I thought he uh, he performed pretty well. It were it were a close fight. I didn't see the fight, but I've seen the uh, controversy after the fact um, on Twitter and all these other platforms saying that it were it obviously went the wrong way. According, yeah. according to the I don't, public, I don't, I don't it think was a it close were decision. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it were a close decision. Yeah. So you can't... I, it won't rob Doro like that. I did think Aldo got it. But right. Fair yeah. enough. The thing is, it was in like typical Aldo fashion, he, um, he faded away pretty late and, you know, it could have all come down to that final round and Aldo... And he's been known for it in the past, like, but he... Um, but that were in five rounders. In a three round, I thought maybe it'd be okay, but maybe that's where the weight cutting comes in. You know, he lost his gas a little bit and he slowed down, which he does tend to do. And... Um, yeah, Marais picked it up and, yeah, it, it, one of them, like, I could see, I think it was, I only watched it once, I think it was maybe one and three you could give to Marais. Like, hey, you could have, Aldo definitely won the second and you could make a case for the other rounds, but, yeah, it, it was close. I th- on my When I first watched it, I thought maybe he's, maybe Aldo's edged it, but then sometimes it's that element of surprise as well. People thought he looked like really bad, the weight cut was going to be hard. How's he going to last at one thirty-five? Sometimes when someone surprises you in a positive way, it kind of takes over 
the rational sense of what's actually happening because yeah. he's doing better than you expected and you get that underdog kind of thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, clouds your judgment a bit. It does, yeah. I think it does. Um, yeah, you know, legit that one could have gone. I can see a case for it going either way, but it should, you know, it's still in and among the top guys and yeah. if he can stay close to the weight and stay at 135, he could still, could still climb. What's the reason for him to go to 135 then if he's obviously made his career at 145? He was always fighting bigger people at 145. He's quite a yeah, short yeah. 145. Or he, he was built and he made the weight fine and dominated it for a long period. But if you look at the 145ers now, they're all a lot taller and longer than him and his style struggles. Because yeah. um, uh, I saw uh, Henry, Henry Hudo's called him out, hadn't he? He said, you know, he said... Yeah, tried to make that, which, which obviously shouldn't happen, but yeah, not, what, not coming off the back of a loss, but you know, if... From a yeah, if it were, obviously if it were as close as you guys say yeah, it was, and then from a business standpoint, they're there to make money, so that'd be a, that would be a good fight for people to yeah, watch, wouldn't it? Aldo's a big big draw. Yeah, but to give someone a title fight off a loss, kind of. Oh yeah, lose yeah. any. I mean, not a real Romero. loss when you consider how close it was, but yeah. I mm. suppose they go where the money is, don't they? But business is business. But, yeah. When you're number one and two contender of four, and it's been a close decision, and number one contender has gone for title fight and lost then the only next person to step up is your number two contender, even though they're off that loss. Yeah. You don't traditionally get it off a loss, though. It's kind of, it's hard to build up a, build up your title fight. You're trying to build it up as these are the best two guys in the world fighting for it, except you just lost. So it's, it's hard to make that case, I think. But I mean, it's kind of the, probably partly one of the reasons why he's gone down because you've got the top two guys at featherweight, Holloway and Volkanovski, who he's lost to, um, and Holloway more than once. It's like, you know, how yeah. do you linger around the top of that division when all the guys who are in the title picture have all beaten you? Yeah, true, yeah. yeah. Very, very true. What the next fight then? So, on to his first one at title fights, Amanda Nunes versus Jermaine Durandame, which seemed to be one of Nunes' hardest fights. She looks slow. Yeah, I've not... I'd, I'll be honest, I didn't watch the whole thing because I heard it were a bit of a snoozer. So, <laughs> I just watched uh, little bits of it, but... It looked like it looked to me like uh, Nunes dominated her. You know, she she took her down. Durandam is obviously a solid striker. Yeah. Nunes just kind of did what she had to do. Just looked like she pretty much just smothered her the whole way through. Um, unless I missed something incredible, kind of. There were a few bits I guess. where uh, Jermaine Durandam, you're like, oh, oh, she definitely tagged her clean and some up kicks front bottom. She pretty much dropped Amanda with an up kick front bottom. Um, Amanda just had to dive on top of her, and luckily there were only ten seconds at round left, or well, she might have been in a bit of trouble. Very, yeah. The thing with that is now she's beaten uh, Durandamy again. I don't even know who she can potentially or possibly fight. Like, who's who is there around that she hasn't already beaten or is uh, worthy of a shot at the moment? She's just like pretty much cleaning the division out and cleaning most of the people out with it. I think her and her partner were talking about having a baby, so maybe a bit of time off and let division fill back up. And Yeah, let someone get on a streak. That might make sense. Fair do is that. So next one, we got got uh, Holloway versus Volkanovski. I enjoyed this fight. Looks like uh, Volkanovski's uh, took a leaf out of Danny Mitchell's uh, tactic book by taking that front leg away from uh, Holloway. I thought it would just, well, it world class, wasn't it? I mean, it didn't have an answer for it, which would surprised me. I didn't know if he'd go for a takedown, you know, I didn't know if they'd try have a play about on floor, but nothing, just five rounds of striking, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh yeah, it's super impressive. I, I just think it's it's fascinating that that's like such a massive tactic just to be able to low calf kicks and oblique yeah, kicks. Just so smash deadly. up just smash up that front leg as much as possible and then it, everything else just stops after that. Yeah. I mean but obviously there's a lot of a lot of different forces at play in that. It, if he just came in there and didn't like set it up and just tried to blast all the way his leg, then it won't be that easy. But Volkanovski, in like the what a city kickboxing like tiny gym in like a, a small island relative to like the USA or whatever. Two world champions now, and they're just like levels of striking at that place are just you know. Isn't Dan Hooker there as well. Yeah, I think yeah. he is. Yeah. I, I think Dan Hooker's been at a few places. I think he's based out of there now. And yeah, it's just like their levels is so high and they. They're kind of on the next plane that people have got to try and catch up to at the moment. And, uh, yeah, it looks difficult to beat. So he's got, like, 
like a lot of setups. It, it kind of just looks like he might be smashing the leg, but what they do is uh, obviously his footwork's pretty good, but he, he works loads of feints. You know what yeah. I mean? So Holloway can't set or keep moving, or Holloway's like obviously longer reach, good boxing, but he's like feinting everything, getting all the way to react, getting all the way to react, like with the hands, with his feet, with his shoulders, yeah. all different types of feints, and then setting it up so he can land clean. And uh, Holloway's not checking a great deal of him because he's. He's never, he never quite knows what's coming because yeah, of all the feints. Well, that, that, he's obviously no, uh, Holloway's known for sort of his striking and his output and being able to punch with like literally orthodox or, or otherwise as he's moving as he's striking. So he switches stance while striking. Like he's, he, he never found his rhythm once. Yeah, you know? that's it. It's that, uh, and that's how pretty much what he did. Like Volkanovski took the took the lead leg away and pretty much then um, you know kept all the way from finding his rhythm. He's ve- he's very much a rhythm fighter. But it's hard to set and be in a rhythm when you've got a guy, Volkanovski, the way that he moves, like I say, the way that he, uh, the way that he faints, he, he'll even, it's not just like hand faints, stuff like that. He faints, step into one side of his foot and he'll move the other way, you know, to try and draw you one way, bring you back in. Yeah. He faints with his shoulders and uh, similar to Adesanya in a lot of ways. Obviously, he doesn't, he doesn't throw the same amount of like crazy stuff as Adesanya, but a lot of the same like fundamentals and the things how they set the shots up. It's, um, yeah, it's like, Holloway has been the best guy in that division for ages and just showed striking wise, you know, we've got some catching up to do. Volkanovski's just beating everybody who, who I didn't think he'd beat. Yeah. No, it's been incredible. I think it's, yeah, it's good. I mean, it, it just it keeps us, it keeps it all entertaining, doesn't it? Like, I, I really like Max Holloway as a as a fighter, as a as a, an entertainer. You know, I think he's he's got everything, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a super nice guy. So he brings a lot of respect to the to the game yeah. as well, which is. Sort of uh, class, what he, what he said after yeah, as well. Yeah, I was going to say, you see his uh, statement on Twitter? Do you, want to, do you want to just pull it up and we'll have a read of it? I have seen it, but it'd be good for you to just... Uh, I did see that he, uh, in a press conference, said to... Uh, he, got, he said, DC, you're eating everything I ever worked for. You know, he's, <laughs> he's going to work his way up to heavyweight. <laughs> Which I thought were really funny. Just to still have that humour on yeah, the back yeah. of a loss, being on such, what was it, like a 10-fight winning streak? Yeah. Like, he's defended the title however many times. He, uh, yeah, he's world class, isn't he? Yeah, and uh, yeah, go on, Dan, I'll let you read it. So he was willing to fight for an interim belt if he couldn't fight me. He was willing to fight anybody, even fighters ranked below him. When you're a champ, everybody is below you. Um, so Alex was carrying w- the weight of that on his show. Sorry, it were on Instagram. I've got to put full post up. Carrying the weight of that belt before Dana wrapped it around his waist. Happy for Alex and Emma and their daughters and Australia. Same ocean, different waves. See you in the lineup again. Ah, that's sick. That oh, I've got a lot of time for that. Like the Hawaiians, man, they're just cool. Like, yeah. like have you been to Hawaii? I've never been. I'd love oh, to go. I, I, I was there last summer, and it's it's just an amazing. They're just all like they're just cool, aren't they? Like yeah. that's that's such a cool like what a cool champion. Okay, you know? I I always liked Holloway, but like and stuff like that. That's what kind of endears somebody to me. I like that sort of stuff. He'll take it, and I'm sure he'll come back, and I'm sure they'll have a rematch as well. And, yeah, you know, with a few adjustments, you know, it can be uh, a close fight. And already, I think Holloway could beat him. You know, but Dana's already talking about the rematch. Is it? Um, yeah, in sign Australia. me up. Sign me up for the pay per view. I'll pay it. Like I think it. It'd be amazing to see that fight again. Daniel, stream it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it'd be really good, and he, des- he deserves a he deserves another shot. Like, he deserves, like he's he's been a, a yeah. class champion, and he deserves to have another stab at it. To be that dominant, you and know, he, if he, you don't deserve a spin at it again, then uh, and he's so young as well. Like he's you know he's, he's been around forever, but he's still got a lot of life left in him. So yeah, and he didn't you know it wasn't a fight where um, he didn't really get hurt a lot. He, he got his lead leg chopped away, but he, he didn't get rocked or anything like that. He wasn't getting smashed around. It was. Um, you know, it was still fairly competitive, but it was just like at that level, it's just like little things, little millimeters here and millimeters there. Um, so I don't think he'll be particularly hurt or anything. I think they could run it back. Yeah, I'd watch it again. Yeah, bring it on. On paper, though, uh, Volkanovski's actually got the bigger reach. Yeah, yeah. Has I, he? I did hear him say that in yeah, the yeah. commentary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but to be fair, you know, this is like an age-old debate, but I don't necessarily agree with how you measure the reach. They measure reach like this. When really that's not the reach that really matters, you know what I mean? The reach that matters would be like this. Yeah, you know? they said about the size of someone's shoulder girdle and things like that. It does matter to a certain degree, but how long your back arm extends to your front arm is not necessarily the most. Uh, and they said about obviously uh, the legs matter and the body matters, the way that you stand and then you move. Like that's in a, yeah. that is like a way to sort of judge your actual reach. They did say that in the commentary, but yeah, it's an interesting little stat. 
good for him, new champ. And then we're on to the, the main event of the evening with uh, Us- Usman versus uh, Covington. Yeah. Uh, see, you know what? I kind of wanted to see an upset. Like, obviously, Covington's a bit of a dick, but I do like the I do like a bit of drama because that's what sells it to us. We like a heel, do you know? Yeah. I'll watch wrestling as kids, do you know? <laughs> yeah. I, do, do, but people say, like, oh, you know, he, he's doing right, he's playing the media and doing this and that. And, yeah, to a certain degree he is, but he's also got to have that amount of being a proper bell end inside him to want to wind people up and go that way. Do you know what I mean? You've got to, it's got to be a part of you. I don't, it's not for me. You probably know this by now, but I will go like, Usman just, uh, just like class all the run up to it. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, that's how he always is. And yeah, fair play to him. I, 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 found it, him I found it kind of a weird fight to watch because obviously there were a lot of talk about the wrestling, the different divisions, all that smack talk. And it was just a stand up fucking kickboxing yeah. match. I don't know if there were one takedown. There wasn't one takedown. And that's what I thought at least one of them would have wanted to go for it to try to get that one up. As, more so Covington. I thought he would have tried to take him down and smother him. Like that's his pretty much one of his tactics. He didn't do any of that. And then his gas tank didn't seem as impressive at all next to Osman either because again, Osman were attacking the body. Um, so like it, the whole thing was just a bit of a back and forth for five rounds and I li- like so me and um, uh, what's it called big guy we're not podcast uh, what's his name uh, Berkey Berkey me and Berkey had a back and forth on uh, on Facebook and I like literally throughout the fight we were messaging back and forth back and forth back and forth and I was like uh, and new and as I typed in and knew, that's when he got knocked out. Because <laughs> I thought he winning it, me. Yeah, I, I thought he winning it. Apparently the scorecards don't say that. Oh, right, okay. Um, it were, it were 3-1 Usman, 3-1 Covington and 2-2. So right. it literally split down the middle. But Usman were, regardless of them scores being like that, he would have gone, because he would dominate in the fifth round, even no matter what, if he didn't finish him or what, like he would have won that because... There was no way none of any of those judges could have given Covington the last round. So it would have been a split decision win. But well, I would I were glad to see Covington get smashed, to be fair. Yeah, I, could, I mean, so, so late. Like, you deep, deep, like 24 minutes in. And I, like, I, like I said, I typed it in. And, and, you know, fair play. Although he got he claimed to have a broken jaw, I don't think that's actually a fact. I think I don't think he did break his jaw. Yeah. Didn't well, look I've, good, though, did I've it? I've heard two reports. I've heard that it did, as per the UFC. He had a crack in it. It won't like it, was. Broke, but it was cracked. Uh, and then I heard that he didn't. So there may have possibly yeah. been a little crack there. Yeah, it, I mean, could be different stuff. It, it didn't look good, whatever it was. Like, it, his jaw didn't look good, but it could have been a discussion, could have been yeah. almost anything. But uh, fair play, whatever. He'd taken damage to it. Fair play, showed good art to keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah definitely. It was were, it were, it were good to see. And to be fair, it was a good finish. Like, obviously, he then gave some shit to Mark Goddard afterwards. Um, saying it shouldn't have been a stoppage. I thought it was a pretty fair stoppage. Yeah, I have no complaints from me. Uh-huh. See, I, see, I thought it were a bit early. I was like, really? he had his hands there, the shots were in his hand. I think like, I think for me, like, I guess I guess maybe if it were like, if, if it had dominated and knocked down uh, Usman in the early rounds and then, you know, it were going to be that close, but because it was so tight, so, so tight, and then he got, he got fucking cleaned out, it doesn't matter, he's lost. Like, even if it had gone to decision, he's completely lost the fight. So I, I didn't really give a fuck, to be honest. Like that's that was like when I was watching it. I yeah. It's like the the shot that dropped him as well. I didn't think like the one that apparently broke his jaw were a lot worse than the one that dropped him. I think that was just like the that straw was... that broke the camel's back. It was like when Rory broke his nose, mm. and the one that dropped him, it he got won twice, didn't he? Got dropped twice in pretty quick succession at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think is fair. Fair, fair. Yeah, and it, it got... but I don't think it were a case. Uh, he got dropped, like, he got knocked out and dropped. He was more like the pain from his jaw, Do you know. He seemed to, like, sit down and try to get away from it. Then. Yeah, he gets sat on your ass if you get dropped sometimes. You don't always fall the same yeah. way. I don't, think, I don't know. It seemed fair enough to me. Dropped twice, quick succession. Yeah. The way, the position that he was in, he wasn't, um, he kind of had one arm around. You can't really call it attacking a single leg. He kind of had his arm there. The other one, he's just getting smashed in the side of the head. He's not progressing his position. Didn't look like he was going to progress his position. He's just eating shot after shot. There's 50 seconds left. You've just been dropped twice. Your jaw's probably broken. Like, 
I don't know what more people want to see when they're up in arms about it. And I think, obviously, because we love the, the the memes that come out afterwards, giving him the old Ben asking a thumbs up. I thought it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> me, like I love I love bringing these these jokes out from way back when. Like to see that 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 makes it all worth it to, <laughs> to see the memes. Yeah, and um, you know the thing is, most people, I guess, if you're going to be the play the true heel, he, he comes out and. Start slagging people off, saying the ref has robbed people and whatever, when he's just saved him, given him an extra few years on his life, probably. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, you know, I thought when he lost, maybe he might have given Usman a bit of respect and, you know, showed a bit of humility to a certain degree, but he just kind of made it all about him again. Yeah, playing the, uh, yeah, playing the bad guy, whatever. Don't, fuck it. Done yeah. it now. Kind I'd say it's one of the, but I don't, it'll be interesting to see, um, to see how sort of well it does because people talk about, oh yeah, Covington's this big heel. People tune in, like, will they? Does anyone care that much? That that the whole point behind the stick is that, oh yeah, he can he can make the money now and he, whatever he draws people in. I don't think Usman, as much as I like him, I don't think he's massively popular, and I don't know if Covington is either. So like, if you're doing all that and it's not actually drawing you any more people than it yeah. would have done before. I was just going to say, well, away it's pretty much. Oh, although you don't like his personality and what have you, he did have some personality in the division. It's pretty much dead now. There's no one. Uh, well, there's Masvidal, but no one really classes him as an actual well away. You know, he's got the BMF title, and he it fucks well, about where. Obviously, if we're going to go on um, Twitter rules. Mr. McGregor then tweeted one forty five, one fifty five, one seventy. So that's him, sort of throwing his hat in the ring that he, re- he, rec- he reckons he's going to uh, walk straight through Cowboy and work himself a title shot and claim the third belt in his career. From from That's what most are reading into that tweet. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. Would you agree? I've had another title he might be getting, but we'll leave that. <laughs> in jail. Uh, anywho. Uh, yeah, we don't, need to get the, we don't need to get this shut down. <laughs> what do you reckon to him coming for a 170 shot? Uh, I think... If he's going to do that, Cowboy's the perfect fight for him. That's, uh, you know, the right kind of fight. He's not, Cowboy's not like a natural 170. He's not like a, someone like an Usman who's an absolute unit. He's, uh, you know, size-wise, it'll be a l- little bit closer. Style-wise, it's good for him. Um, I think that's, as, I, I like Cowboy as well. I think that if he's, if you're going to take any fight at 170 and then look to do BMF or even potentially run at the title, I think that's a good way. As good of, Whilst it whilst it is a top tier guy, you know it's probably the best pick for him to. I, I to agree. Do. I think it's a safe. It's a safer bet, isn't it? I think obviously. I think most others would give him a massive run for his money. Covington, Usman, like if he'd got any. Well, obviously any Usman, but and and um, Tyron Woodley. Like yeah. I think I just don't. Woodley, <laughs> Dos Anjos, any of those fucking, guys. They'd be horrendous fights for him. Yeah, I don't like the look of that for him. So I think it, it, that's a shrewd pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if he is that January, January the eighteenth for some yeah. or fourteenth, so yeah. You know, and I'm I'm not saying that he'll run through Cowboy necessarily, but I think it's stylistically is a pretty good fight for him. Um, but yeah, he, you know, if he actually wanted to run at the top, there's a lot of guys who are not a good matchup for him in that division. Look at like if you look back at I know things change, people evolve, and um, but if you look back at um, when he fought Mendez, who was like a fairly small guy, yeah, um, who came in at a fairly low notice as well. And did a fairly good job at wrestling him for a bit. Yep. Like you put that onto a an Usman who was like a gargantuan unit, like yeah. Covington, and these guys were strong and relentless and have got mint gas. You saw it with both of them too, like the gas tanks are there to keep going, keep pushing, yeah. like this. Yeah. Well, six. I mean, obviously his fight against Mendez, he chipped away at the body, they invested in that early and just kept chipping away, chipping away. And that's that's how he put him to bed. Uh, you know, like teep kicks to the fucking stomach and <laughs> I was just going to say, I think that Teep's going to be a big part of his game plan for Cowboy Fight. Although he um, is, um, all his social media just is weighing heavily on uh, Jiu Jitsu. He just seems to be putting posts about Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu. So that, I think that'd be quite it's interesting if he reckons he's got it, if, if he reckons he's got that game in him to actually come out and, and have a grapple and, and finish somebody by a submission, you know, go for it. Because I mean, if you look at um, Conor, how many losses he got? Like two or three. And I think, you know, I think he's. One of his first losses were to like a head and arm triangle, but way back in. Um, if I remember fit. rightly, is that right? Every loss he's got to submission. Yeah, so yeah, so I think 
it, but that'd be a good way for him yeah, to Yeah, five back. losses, all to submission. If he came back as like a champ, you know, if he did come back and run at a title and he did start winning some by submissions and said, look, I filled this gaping hole in my game. But obviously he has got the power in that left hand to just sleep people, whether it'll work at 170, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, that is that was his, always his main, his striking was just second to none, wasn't it really? Yeah. For, I mean, for, I mean, for it, his style. It's relative, like the level of his striking, he, he, I don't, he's never been like a, a bad grappler, do you know what I mean? The guys yeah. that have beat him, he's gone as like a legit brown belt under, you know, the best coach in Ireland, the most long-standing coach in Ireland there for uh, John Kavanagh. And he'll probably be a black belt soon. And somebody who's training jiu-jitsu, he'll be training jiu-jitsu and grappling every single day. Obviously, on the on at the top stage, you know, you're getting beat by guys who are super fucking legit submission guys, Nate Diaz or whatever. But... Yeah, he's not, you know, if he just rocked up to your gym and rolled, like, he'd be a beast. You'd, yeah, if yeah. you didn't know him, you'd be, like, you'd think you were an animal. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure he, he showed some pretty good jiu-jitsu against Khabib at points I agree, well. yeah. I, I don't think it were as bad as everyone says. I'm, all, all I'm saying is I think it'd be good to see him, you like, if he could finish somebody using his jiu-jitsu, I think it'd get people yeah. talking. Do you know what I mean? I remember him choking out Dave Hill at Cage Warriors when he won the uh, featherweight title. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah. It rocked him and hurt him pretty badly first, right? Then choked him. Oh, nice. So uh, there might be one. It might be his only submission win, maybe. <laughs> Danny's there. Sure. Don't worry about Google it. What's your gut feeling then for the uh, Cowboy uh, uh, McGregor fight? How do you see it? How do you see it finishing? I'm not not sold on Cowboy's chin, so I'd go maybe a McGregor two or three stoppage. I agree. I'm not sold on his chin either. I think it's going to be. I think it. I also think it's going to swear that way. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Could be. A, could be an interesting run. I'm. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see him come back again. Uh, I was a massive fan of him way back when. Um, obviously, he came back and had a run at Khabib, and that didn't quite go to plan. And he ran away again, and now he's come back out again. So we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, I'll reserve judgment on a lot of things for now. Yeah, well, well done on that one, though, Jay. Yeah, only submission, Davil. There you, go. Naked show. there you go then. Um, what's next on your list of uh, of things? <clears throat> so next we're on to Jay's area of expertise for the weekend, fame MMA. All right, cool. Let's, let's, I, don't, I don't know anything about this. This isn't going to last very long, but Jay, all on you, mate. Do not explain to yeah. me what it is first? Well, basically, fame MMA is pretty big in Poland. Um, it's just like celebrities, YouTubers, all that sort of stuff fighting each other, basically. MMA podcast hosts, does that count? Uh, yeah, I did maybe. think we might try to get, get you on next yeah. card. G- maybe G- maybe, maybe hit a certain level of subscribers and they might invite you. <laughs> yeah. I saw one of the fights, I saw somebody sharing it, take it piss out of them, and it was just awful. Like, two guys ended up in some sort of hugging fest. There was no jujitsu on any wrestling, it was just kind of, I don't think there were any punches on the ground, they just kind of rolled about for a bit, and that was yeah. pretty much long and short of what I'm, I saw. I mean, some of it was, um, some of it was pretty awful. Um, <laughs> You were a judge, yeah. is that you were a judge, right? Yeah. So I first got approached about it. I just thought it was just like a regular, regular promotion, um, like a normal thing. Yeah. And then someone, uh, I think my missus said to me, oh, oh, this fight's on that show. Is that the one you're doing? And I'm like, oh, it was the, the guys from Geordie Shaw. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And I thought maybe it's just like a feature main event. That's the guy that run it. And I'm like, are they all like this? He's like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, I didn't want to let him down. So, I, you know, I've gone and done it. But in all honesty, I probably wouldn't do it again. Like, I, I've turned down, like, white collar shows and stuff like that before for that reason that, like, I'm, yeah, I'm not sold on it. And But as far as it being done, some of them, obviously, had trained and trained quite well. Some of them hadn't. But you got, like, production was unreal. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, you... you you're looking at like big show level production as in UFC level kind of production. Um, you know, the staging, the lights, all that sort of stuff. It's obviously had money behind it. Um, and, you know, they were brain scans, full medicals, all that sort of jive. So, you know, as safe as it is to have a bunch of fighting each other, then that's right. it. You know, like is what it is. That's, you know, if that wasn't the case, then I, I sort of wouldn't have done it. But the... Um, yeah, like some of them you could tell were, were really raw, but I was pleasantly surprised with, um, I was chatting to some of the guys, uh, one of the George Shaw fellows, he's training with 
Um, Alex Enland up at SBG South Shields and um, he won in the main event and, you know, I was chatting to him. He, nice fella and that. Um, but he's been training six months, twice a day, you know, and, and apparently by all accounts, he wanted to like have a run at an amateur career and this sort of stuff. He might go do the IMAFs and things like that. Like he's, he got, I'm, I'm assuming he got good money for, for that thing. Yeah. But, like he's taking it seriously. It's not like I think the well, guy that he then, fought. Yeah. I think the guy that he fought probably was in it for a payday and you know to try and look hard or whatever. But it's Gaz. Is it Gaz? I forget what his name is anyway. I think it's Gaz. Uh, but he took it seriously, and you know Alex said he's training hard and um, you know fair play. Like if he's legitimately you know running out of there, he's the kind of guy. He's, if he's going to do how much fights, at eye mass and things like that, where you're not getting paid. Um, it's clear that he wants to go about it the right way. No, so, fair play. if he's investing the time and the effort, and he wants yeah. to have a go at it, then you can't, you know, you can take that off to him. But yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not down for the guys who were not training and think they can jump in and do it. But it's quite funny as we're talking about this. You can just see the numbers dropping off the live stream. <laughs> it's so funny. That's fucking savage, that isn't it? Yeah, you'll have to tag like Jordy Shaw and something. It might bring some people. In. Well, we, I actually tagged uh, Aaron from George Aaron Chal Chalmers in yeah. for uh, Alex Thompson uh, I tagged he was there commentating what was he yeah, yeah. I, uh, I tagged him on Instagram the other day because um, there were a few people give, like the, the, it re-emerged Alex Thompson's fight against him and we all know how that went down and um, Alex basically said I'll fucking have a grappling match then so I tagged them both in it see if I get some traction a few people commented back you know um, so I think if we can get this pushed out as a grappling match Alex to, <laughs> Alex's redemption yeah. Alex I, I don't, don't, don't want none of that smoke with Alex's grappling Nah. Nah. But I mean, I I don't know for sure, but I know Aaron's been um been training with high level guys and stuff like that. I'm sure he's come on pretty well in his grappling. Why not? Why not? Well, well I, I know why not, money, but like it would be and he and he wouldn't have anything to gain seeing as he's already won the fight in MMA quite decisively. Yeah. But. Quite decisively. <laughs> so PC in it fucking hell. But yeah, yeah I, I, I I could see <laughs> why Alex might fancy that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I want not for that one. No, I remember watching it on Quite TV. Quite decisively. <laughs> oh, it's a good job we love him, isn't it? Yeah, no, fair one. Um, oh, else on your list there, Danny? Or are we going to wrap it up and have a nice little short and sweet podcast? No, I've got plenty to go. Have you? Yeah. Oh, shit, go on then. Yeah, we're fine. Chill. Uh, so we've oh, got, Sam, um, that was his name. i just seen it on Danny's screen. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thomas. Thompson getting presented the nicest motherfucker oh, in yeah. MMA belt. I want you to discuss that after you said nip to the uh, gents. By uh, uh, Ariel Awani. You see that, Jay? I saw a picture of it, yeah. I love Stephen Thompson. Yeah. Love Stephen Thompson. Nice guy. I've, I met him once or twice. I interviewed him for, uh, I think it was UFC Liverpool a couple of years ago. And he's like, you couldn't meet a more pleasant guy. Do you know what I mean? he uh, That was the one he lost to Till. He lost to Till, didn't he? And it yeah, was, yeah. But it was a close fight, I think. But um, yeah, like he's just like the most polite human on earth, probably. Just a real nice guy. He's, if there's a nicer guy than him, I'm yet to meet him. Yeah, I, I think he were a, a bit like poorly named being called the nicest motherfucker, I think. The, mm. the nicest, friendliest guy or something yeah. like that. But nicest chap. Yeah, I don't know. So we've got that. Um, Hector Lumbar versus Joe Riggs in a bare knuckle boxing match has been announced. Yeah, probably pretty entertaining that actually. Lombard is That's a like scary a thing guy. to think about, yeah. isn't it? Imagine him coming at you like a thousand miles an hour in bare knuckle. That's pretty brutal. I um I did uh I were in Aus I were in Australia and it's funny how it came about but I did I did meet Lombard and um yeah he's a very intense guy. He we were in the uh, so the way that it worked, I, I went to a gym that was close to my uncle's house where I was staying. And it just so happened that that night they had a seminar in and it was the um, Conan Silvera from American Top Team was running a seminar. And he says, oh, seminar's fully booked, um, but you can do the boxing class if you want. So I went and did this class and I spoke to the head coach of this gym after and he's like, you know, just chatting to him. And I, I was working for a magazine at the time. Um, and he says, oh, we've got a show tomorrow night. Um at some place in Sydney. He says, you know, come down, check it out. And I'm like, uh, no, it was the Saturday night and this was the Thursday. And he's like, yeah, all right. I said, yeah, I'll come down. I'll bring my brother down with me. We'll have a night out. Why not? And the next day was the Wayne's at some, like, just pub on the road, some dicey little pub. And he says, come to the Wayne's, well, if you want. I'm like, yeah, literally two minutes walk from my uncle's house, which was weird. But so I went there, 
Lombard was fighting in the main event against um, American guy. I forget his name now. Like tough guy, like durable. I won't say journeyman like a journeyman you think, but like a road warrior. Do you know what I mean? And uh, so they're both weighing in, and but these other guys just like drunk, random drunk guys in this pub. During, it's like midday or whatever, but like a couple of random drunks in there. And I was chatting to Lombard. He was friendly, quite you know pleasant and whatever. Then some drunk guy comes over and starts like tapping him on the shoulder, and he just like flipped his lid like you know a weight <laughs> cutting next to Lombard waiting to get on the scales. Like it was being nice to me, and then like within a split second, it's just like exploded, and like some random drunk who doesn't even know who this guy <laughs> is is like whoa, and Nick is like trying to get him, everybody's holding him back, and he's just like pure flipped his lid, Shit. and uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And I'm like whoa, and then it all sort of stopped, and then he comes back and he's like. And I'm like smiling away. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> mate, that's some crazy shit. Some He's a mad psycho. guy. <laughs> yeah, he smashed the guy that I fought. I'm ah, struggling to remember his name, but yeah, he smashed him. But he's a scary guy. Stand in front of him, bare knuckle. Like, he's not the most technical boxer, but for him to be firing in at you at full pelt, yeah, it'd be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? Joe Riggs is a tough guy as well. Pretty decent hammers. Just talking about Hector Lombard yeah, yeah. Uh, being announced for bare knuckle. Yeah, look, I mean, you look at him. He's fucking hell. He's like a pit bull, isn't he? You get a lot of fighters named Pitbull. It's probably the most popular nickname in the world. <laughs> but he does quite physical like a pit bull, like just how stocky and thick That's some is. unit, that, isn't it? Yeah, he's a unit. He's got traps on his traps. <laughs> Yoel style. What's next? So next up we have... Da, da, da. Oh, Quintet Ultra. You see any of that front weekend? We we're on UFC yeah, Fight Pass. Yeah, I saw some of it, yeah. What, some of the submissions. He, he calls himself a Jits guy. And I, I, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, don't ever say that again. I never, ever call myself a Jits guy. What, are you kidding I, me? I, I heard got you stripes. calling out Brian. <laughs> I've got no, Stripe. I've, oh, got, like stripe. I've got Stripe. That's it. You you were calling out Brian. Yeah, know? I mean, I've, I, like Brian's fucking on still, mate, but <laughs> I'm not a Jits guy and I've got a Stripe. So don't ever do that again. Force that on me. <laughs> yeah, so it like Team WEC versus Team UFC versus Team Pride versus Team Strike Force. And it seemed, I didn't obviously watch the whole thing, but I've seen some of the finishes and there was um, some of the super fights as well. It looked pretty entertaining from what I saw. And there was some some pretty good upsets and stuff. I think it like a bit of an anticlimax towards the end. A lot of them, you know, you know the quintet format, like yeah, Danny, teams, you've of, done teams before, of five. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like the one Danny did. But if it's a draw, then both guys go out. But there was some um, some pretty good submissions and stuff, and some upsets. I think it was James Krauser um, submitted the big dude um, Mo Lawal, King Mo, yeah. which was, with a guillotine, which was pretty crazy because Krauser was always like a lightweight. Mo was like the strike force light heavyweight champion, and he got submitted with a guillotine. Um, there was some other decent ones as well, but like the names on it, like they were all names you'd be interested in seeing. You know what I mean? So. In D- fact, Danny uh, might have some input on why King Mo didn't do too well, but see that when he gets back. <laughs> Won't be relevant then. So yeah, no, drop on, it on spit his it Why? <laughs> I think Danny's watching. We'll let him drop it in comments. Oh, whatever. <laughs> we didn't actually talk about... So, yeah, Danny went, Danny dressed up who sat in corner you never get to actually see. It's a good thing. Um, he uh, went and did ADCC, didn't he, a couple of weeks ago? Oh, yeah, yeah. How, how did you get on? Uh, terrible. All right. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> no, I lost uh, my first match on two points. Um, so it went the distance. That's good, that. Yeah, yeah. and a big step up in competition. Yeah, you went, went into, into blue belt pros. No, I went into pros. Oh, just sorry, pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. as a blue belt. Yeah, nah, that's so, bonkers. Yeah, yeah. and they, they, they tend to do it ADCC. It's by years training as well, and I'm sure you haven't been training that many years to actually be in that bracket. So you've, no, moved, no, you, you've moved up to. You should be training it. at least four year and what well, about two and a half year? But oh, sod it, chuck me name in that. See how I go. Heavy in it. I did go down to ADCC and watched everybody else. And then when your fight, just get, get and move back and move back. And it, it, it we're about six, seven o'clock you're on. Uh, we got there at fucking eight for, for him to weigh in. To, Drove to Manchester for eight o'clock. He weighs in. Sign like, a sports center all day. Oh yeah, I, I'm not actually on until four. I'm like, four? <laughs> you fucking kidding me? Like I've got to go watch, I'm, I'm, in, I'm off to Barnsley tonight to watch Josh, uh, Anthony Joshua versus Ruiz, which was... You're going to Barnsley to watch Anthony Joshua versus Ruiz? Yeah, only because my mate lives down there. Uh-huh. Don't ever go to Barnsley. Sorry to people that live You've in Barnsley. You've got a mate in Barnsley. I didn't see that one. Mate, but you just see it on Instagram story. Some guy shit on floor. Bringing Berkey back in. 
<laughs> he won't have you slagging off bounds like that. Mate, it's, you know what? It actually don't look that bad, but the pub that we were in were rough as fuck. Some guy actually shit on the floor and then stepped it all the way around the, the pub <laughs> and the toilets. <laughs> so that one on my Instagram story, proper grim. But what did you what, what did you make of the uh, Ruiz fight and the Joshua fight? I thought he played a good game. I liked it. Good for him. He fucking did what he needed to do. Oh, like absolutely. I'm not going to fault him for it. He, uh, you know, you get an, a big upset the, the time before, and you get pinged by a guy that everybody expects you to beat. You first lost, first time you've been knocked out. Whatever game plan wins you the fight is the one that you should employ. Totally. Do, do you see him being up there with Fury and Wilder? No. Right, so what I don't know is... <laughs> so I, I think Wilder's probably the the better guy to beat Joshua for the, like, the one-shot KO power that he's got. Um, like Boxing-wise, yeah, Joshua can, can obviously box probably better, but Wilder's got that... You know, he can turn your lights out. But I like Tyson Fury. I'm a big fan of him. But all of a sudden, I don't know where this whole, like, thing has come from that someone like Joshua couldn't, you know, hold a candle to him because I don't know where that, like, what what fight has he had? Apart from beating, well, probably should have beaten um, Wilder. Like, and he looks slick against Wilder, who is, happens to be the... One of the worst boxers in the division (laughs) who can just ping people. So, obviously, Fury's going to outbox him. But, you know, he's had some terrible fights, like the, you know, his big coming out fight with the Klitschko one, um, which was a way worse fight than Joshua versus Ruiz. It, you know, it's pretty good, but I don't get the where it's come from that these guys are out of Joshua's league. I don't, I don't know. He's a, like Olympic champion. He's beaten good guys throughout his career. Yeah, he lost to Ruiz, but, um, and he has been tagged a couple of times, but Did, it's, I, it, these guys are levels above him by any means. I think he'd have a competitive be- fight with either of them. Back to the beginning, as you say there, do you think he won that gold medal? Or do you think he won because it were in London? Can't remember. Did he win a gold medal, did he? He, I thought he, he got won. given a gold medal. I thought he were, did he not get a bronze. No, he got no, a gold medal. He, he, he got, gold, he really. got given a gold medal, but I was like... Yeah, but the one they, they were doing it fight, and I was like, oh, shit. I thought they were doing it on that, gold uh, then. The, the point system thing then, then, wasn't it? You know, as in the... When you <laughs> when you score a point, the judges press a button, and if it lands, then you win that way. Douglas Patterson's commented, saying uh, Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight on the planet. The man has spoken. That's it. Yeah, you know, I, I don't necessarily disagree, but I don't think there's as much in between them all as people think. I, Joshua's got a good chance of uh, beating either of those two. I don't know if I'd have necessarily have it in his favour, and I have him as a favourite, but I don't think either of them blow him out of the water. I feel like Anthony Josh- Joshua's Daniel Cormier and Fury and Wilder are John Jones. You know, it's like, is the best that isn't them two. <laughs> <laughs> but you look at... Like, he'll oh, he'll oh, snatch than, everyone else. Other than the fight with... Um, what's his face? With Wilder. When has Fury looked like levels above... Like anybody, do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, there's been some guys who were effectively journeymen who, who've looked reasonable against him, and yeah, people get better. He looked his best performance for me was the slickest his look was against Wilder, and I mean, he nearly got decapitated. That's probably one of the best moments in sports I've ever seen for somebody to <laughs> get like starch like that and to bounce back up. And fair play to him, <laughs> he's, the, he's the best technical now boxer out of, up as well. Yeah, he's, he's the best boxer out of a lot of them, Fury, definitely, but he's got. Probably got the least power out of a lot of them. Yeah. So, you know, this that's the great equaliser, isn't it? I, I do think it'd be an interesting one to see. Uh, just the way that Joshua fights, because he, he obviously he's always going for that power punch, keeps that front. Like obviously it works behind that jab against Ruiz, but he does keep that lead arm down. He don't, you know, he don't. It's down here. It's not. He's not got up against his chin. Um, and he was stepping. I remember watching the fight, and I, I was like, ass twitching all the way through the Ruiz fight because he just kept stepping to the. Uh, to the left, which would be the overhand that would have knocked him out last time. And he just kept stepping that way. And I'm like, you need to go the way, you need to go the way. Stop stepping that way. Yeah. I'd like to see, I think Fury versus, uh, they were talking about this week, and they'd be like training together and whatever. But I'd like to see that happen. That'd be enormous fight in the boxing yeah. world. But in the UK, that'd be huge, make massive money for them both. But like, technically, I'd love to see... Um, uh, Wilder and Ruiz, that would be a pretty good fight. And w- Wilder was losing when he fought Thingy the other week. It was getting outboxed yeah. again quite easily. Um, but yeah, he's, ooh, shit, I just put myself down. But he's got that. <laughs> he's got that 
like I said, the great equaliser, which, when I put back up, is his power. And he could knock either of those two out, but I feel like uh, Fury's the best boxer, Wilder's got the most power, just with somewhere in between is the next most powerful and the next best boxer. Weirdest thing I've seen in boxing history is uh, Wilder turning up at Batley's Mr. T's restaurant to open it on a random Wednesday night <laughs> about four weeks ago. That's the weirdest thing I've yeah, seen. Yeah, I remember that, actually. I, I thought that was just like a rumour. I'm like, surely not. What the like fuck on, is that? It's on some random like restaurant in Bath- across from Mungo's, yeah. where we used to like just be off the fucking head <laughs> on a Friday and Saturday night, and there's opening this this little curry shop. I don't even know yeah. what it is. Like, is it a curry shop or something? I don't know. Who's there? Yeah. Why? I'll, I don't know how that came. They've obviously paid him or whatever. Fair play, but how so much random. money? How much money? Right. That they make a lot of money in boxing, right? So how much money do you have to pay Wilder to come from wherever the fuck he is to Batley to open a fucking, you know? What is it? It was a curry house, a burger shop, like, like whatever it is on on yeah. Bradford Road. In business and marketing, that's a lot of burgers or shit and milkshakes to sell to get that money back. Yeah. What if you're not just selling burgers and shakes? Listen, don't get shut down. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just saying, what if you've got other Fries. revenue streams other, right. that are getting clear, yeah, like merchandise, yeah, through your like, yeah, do you know, like, cheesecake, chicken ah, fillet, cheesecake, t-shirts assassin. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so that is the weirdest thing in boxing history I've ever seen. Yeah, that is pretty mad. And it, as far as I saw, like, I didn't see him do any other engagement. So it's not as if, like, I mean, I get he's like coming a, and doing Amir Khan or stuff. someone, like, from like Bolton or whatever, but not all the way from America. Yeah, Amir Khan now were um, I was down at uh, Click Eating ABCs probably six or seven years ago. And Amir Khan came through, like, you know, Bolton, you're a 40 minute drive away. Yeah. Come down, help the local community, get a buzz for the gym and stuff like that. But to fly from Alabama or whatever, <laughs> and like, I don't know. For the people of Batley. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that's listening that's not from around here, you won't really understand that section, but it's not, yeah, it's not good. So on that. the basis of um, how Paul Wilder's boxing technique is not just like far better than mine. I'll still put that out there. Do you think Ngannou could cross over to boxing? We were talking about it on Rogan the other week. Uh, well, Shawburn, Rogan. Um, I'd like, be game for watching them two have a do. Yeah, we've seen weird like, things it, happen. It, it get taken apart by someone slicker like the Fury. Or, you know, even... Um, but, oh, I can't remember it, the Cuban guy's name. Oh, he's, he's got that wilder but, factor that if he lands on anyone... The, the going out. Yeah. There's no two ways about well, like it. Like, he'll end up in uh, bare knuckle or something and he'll do some damage, but yeah, those two slugging it away, you know, I'd be down for it. That's it, sold. Next. Next up, we have, I think we're pretty much at the end now. Oh, um, do you just want to go over UFC Fight Night 165? That's oh, yeah, because Ortega's out, isn't he? Yeah, Ortega's out. Um, that was going to be his big comeback again. He got his face boxed off, didn't he? Um, and this was going to be his big... Big comeback fight against Korean Zombie. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. yeah he hadn't um, fought. Well, he hadn't fought in 2019. No. Oh. Had a nice big rest and now he's torn his ACL, much like uh, Cub Swanson did uh, Quintet Ultra. Yeah, that happened, didn't it? Yeah. Although they were there shooing beers this weekend, weren't they? I seen it on, on, on the uh, UFC on the fight. Nah, it's only an ACL. You don't need yeah. one. You, Jake Shields won it. Jake Sh- I mean, the thing is, it, harking back to that, I know you're talking about something else, but like, Jake has not been fighting in MMA and he's been doing competitive grappling for the last couple of years pretty seriously. And he, I think he had the most submission wins Then there's like levels at that to do. The UFC guys like, a, uh, well, the MMA guys are going to finish and stuff like that, but there's levels to submission grappling when it's pretty much all you're focusing on. Like mm-hmm. Shields is at... Um, Henzo's with Danaher and all those guys were like elite level guys training there doing bits and you can't you just can't do that to that same level as someone who's trying to fight MMA well, it's as like, well do you see Craig Jones's match yeah Craig Jones that, that, yeah. that will like a massive yeah and, he's, and, 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 Go- and Gordon Ryan as well you know you're taking on guys who were not as committed to he fought Alexei Lenik who's a good grappler in MMA but there's a Big difference between the chasm between being a good grappler in MMA and taking on the best grapplers in the world who just grapple. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Those two are yeah, two of the best. Yeah, so I was just gonna go over uh, top three fights. So we got Korean uh, Superboy, is it? Korean Superboy, Korean Wonderboy, Korean Zombie. No, no. Oh, further down. Yeah, yeah. About, uh, I don't call you Choi or... Uh, I'm, I'm not good. You know, come on, Jay. You're like Asian correspondent. Uh, help me out here. This is true. Yeah. 
So we're going with Korean Superboy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll have a let him have that. Uh, verse Wrong promotion. Charles <laughs> Doreen. But Korean Superboy, like, legit, he, he were on a run, um, going through everyone. And I think it's, what, three losses? Um, but yeah, other than that, he's, like, annihilating everyone. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to get too much from me out of any of these. No, oh, yeah. Ozdemir and uh, Rakic, that's a good fight. Yeah, yeah. I like that one. Both of those guys are good. Good strikers, powerful. Oh, uh, we'll watch. And those two guys, obviously, uh, I mean, if, good, if, if Rakic can uh, get through, it'd be good to have uh, like a European guy. He's That'll put him sort of at the top of the tree then. If he beats Ozdemir convincingly, it'd be good to see him. Um, yeah, basically upset, to upper echelon there. Top four, top five yeah. there, aren't they? Yeah, and he's come come through pretty quick as well. It's always exciting. And then uh, main event, you want to do us a breakdown on that? Frankie Edgar versus Korean Zombie. Was it Korean Zombie that did that weird up elbow? That was him? that him? Remember? Finished the fight no, in like last 10 seconds. that was Yaya yeah, Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Oh, right, yeah. okay. I don't know why I'm thinking of him then. Did he? He might have been one that got knocked out. Yeah. Yeah, I think he won, wasn't it? I knew you were part of this. I knew you were part of this. Yes, he did. He was the one that got hit with the elbow. That's one of the most yeah. amazing things I've ever seen. That was so yeah. wacky, that, wasn't it? Um, but that's... Not a, really selling that fight. Not really selling that, the fight. That's the thing from a Cowboys camp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rodriguez. Law. Yeah, that, that was mental. That, that was like one of yeah, the best. That, that's going down in history, that thing. I think there were like three seconds left. Yeah. And yeah, well, sec- right Second yeah. fastest Fucking finish. Co- it was only Mighty Mouse were one faster. Yeah, and that was literally in the last seconds, or like point three of a second to go, and Mighty Mouse got an amber. That's savage, that in it. Yeah, that's a good fight. It'd be entertaining. Like Korean Zombie, that's always been his thing. Do you know what I mean? Like he's always in mad fights, and Edgar pushes a good pace. It's just be, um, I don't know. This is it's a bit of, I guess there's some like. Title connotations to it to a certain degree. It's a, it's a weird one because one uh, Ortega's last fight against Max Holloway, and he obviously got his face boxed off. Like it, it probably don't look the same as he did when last time we've seen him. So then go on to a fight night, like to go from like a main event for the title, then to come obviously a year later he's on a fight night. It's a bit of a weird. It, it's big in Asia though, isn't it? Do you know? Yeah. Like they try to keep the numbered events. Um, for like pay per views and you know all yeah. over the US, um, and then fight nights go off to different countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fair one. Slight reversal back actually. That's my thinking. Um, obviously, Covington lost, and he uh, has not been necessarily on the friendliest terms with the UFC brass. It's probably as good of uh, an opportunity as any for them to sort of relegate him. Do you know what I yeah, mean? I, I think it'll happen. So it was, it was after more money. I can't blame any fighter for wanting more yeah. money and trying to get the worth, but I think he ended up buckling to it, didn't he? And he fought anyway. And uh, like I saw a little bit at the Waynes where he's sort of, him and Dana White, Dana shakes everybody's hand and he's just like, Covington just walks past. Now that he's lost, I could see him like getting relegated to like the fight night cards. And because then, he, then he's going to struggle to get the attention that he yearns, you know what I mean? That's yeah. everything that he wants. And uh if you can keep him sort of silenced by the media, not caring as much about the smaller cards, I think that might end up being his uh, just desserts for daring to say anything bad about the UFC brass. Yeah. D- Dana fell out with Colby over the whole prostitute incident. You see that? Whoa, um, you're going to get us <laughs> fucking shut down here. What are you on about? Go on. Dana... Can I just put out there, these are all alleged and they're no, no, all, they're it, all it, their opinions. It's definitely Danny. documented. This no. is why like, they fell out and what have you. Right. Um, Colby went up to Dana while he's in casino with some nice ladies of the night in his private little booth, okay. live on Instagram, filming. Obviously, Dana's got like a family at home that I don't imagine you want seeing the company that he's with. So Dana started kicking off and basically telling him to get this camera out of his face and put it away and stop recording. Yeah, yeah you can go online and watch it all. Um, and we're making that, the assumption that these were <laughs> ladies of the night. It's legal in uh, Las Vegas. Yes. So we're going to say that they probably oh, were. Frowned upon, probably. No, no, like that. Like no, the I, mean, I mean, like he's got family and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. He might have an open relationship. Maybe. He might have one of them. Might be so. polyamorous. We're not going down this rabbit hole. I don't actually... I've heard that. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I just don't know. I won't get into it if you don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. Go on, just tell us what it is. Because I watched it some on Louis Theroux. 
which is always good. Uh, like, yeah. Polyamorous is like when you, uh, you're in a relationship with multiple people at the same time. Like, it's, I think on the way there's a, this one woman and she's got like three Sweetness. boyfriends who all live together and like all fulfill different roles and they, they're happy f- to go out and do whatever. Sounds like a party. Yeah. Good for them, whatever floats your boat and whatever gets through the day. Whatever's your, uh, your anchor, go for it. So just to clarify that, she had three boyfriends. Yeah, so she's got three holes. <laughs> <sighs> no, that's it, innit? That's the end of the. That's the end of the show. On that bombshell. We'll see you in the new year. That's what's going to happen for now. <laughs> Jay, thanks for coming down and making one in, mate. Pleasure. Um, it's been good to have a chat over this weekend's UFC and to learn a little bit about fame. Can't see it coming round mm, again. Maybe it will. I know it's popular in Poland. Is that right? Yeah, very popular. Yeah, but obviously, that's oh, the last spot. Uh, the last one. Well, you know, I know we're signing off, but they had um, they had a dwarf fighting like a regular guy on the last one and stuff like that. Like they, I mean, there's no shame in it in Poland. They absolutely love it. And they heard um, KSW, which is like the biggest, most legit promotion in uh, in Europe, probably. They're starting their own called FFF, which is Freak Fight Federation. And that's coming from like the most established name in the sport. Like it's a different landscape over there. Some wow. Stuff. Freak <laughs> Fight Federation. Yeah. That'll be something for us to comment on. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, when that comes around, we'll bring that <laughs> See up. See how politically correct you can stay then, Jay. <laughs> you won't be coming down anymore, will you? That's it. Right. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. Um, check out our sponsors, um, Ali at Muscle Medicine and Amazing Green CBD. Get, you, get your orders in for uh, for Christmas and we will see you in the new year. Thanks for listening.